So what are these chords? F sharp major s nine sharp eleven, and then the next one is well that's that's F sharp minor major seven. F sharp major seven with a sharp five. This is zesty. This is this is real zesty. I like that. And then this one is what? This is B major flat five. This is one of the wonkiest things I've played in a while. Alright, let's start with some chords. Six bar phrase. I like it already. Stepping outside the norm because it just had to be that way. Not trying to be weird, we just are weird. Where's our kick? I guess you could say I'm quantizing it because I don't want any feel. I don't want to feel anything. I just want to hear the groove. Let's put a C up here. Sharp tritone substitution. There we go. Let's get some more beef out of these drums. Drum bus. It's a little on the beat. Let's shift it around. Let's syncopate it. Let's see. And what we gotta do now is we gotta break out of session view. Session view doesn't cut the mustard for very long, to be honest. At the end of the day, music begins and it ends. You gotta have a timeline. The loop, it's an illusion. You're not actually looping. You're still going in time from wherever you start and then you end however long after that. There's no circle. Feeling like it should go. Let's do an offbeat there. That's slick. Yeah, there we go. And now maybe we can use this as an idea. We can have that come back. Look at that, there's already a hole there. You see that? Look at that. Boom. get back to the B flat minor 9 over E flat by way of a tritone substitution from F so B7 sets us up for the next part of the phrase going and that's the reverse of what we had initially nice in order to implement the next idea we have to double the loop but we're not really looping it we're just extending the idea we're, we're continuing the phrase or the sentence or whatever you want to call it now we got a 12 bar idea which is 27 seconds and this is what I love to see is when the idea itself almost demands that you extend the idea in order to continue what you're saying. You set up an idea, there's a comma, and then there's an even more enticing part of the idea, and then maybe there's a punctuation mark at the end of that whole sentence. 
And when that whole sentence is in the ballpark of 30 seconds or so, now you're talking about a section of a tune. Instead of it going to da da, it's going to go da da. D flat can come down to C, so now we can just reposition these notes. It already resolves. Same chords, but now they're going to be kind of like on the upper levels of what's possible instead of the lower levels like they were the first go around. And we need our bass line to change there, so let's see, we need it to go dun, 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 dun. This F can stay there. And this just needs to be B. We haven't synced up the bass line with the uh, change in the rhythm. Let's do that. So that's going to be right here. Let's try yeah. And then this needs to be, you guessed it. I want another note here. Maybe C? We'll go up to C. Yeah, let's try that. Now it feels like it should just kind of follow the same deal, which would be B flat. So we'll redistribute these notes just like we have. It kind of follows the same flow here. I feel like it wants to then fall to this G note. So we're gonna take a whole different route here. Same chords, same notes, different route through them in terms of the top note. thing there. I mean, that might be the way to end it is instead of it being minor, maybe it's interesting. Could be a different chord on F. I'm liking this. Could be a major chord. Let's go with that. That action over here. I want that same rhythmic motion over here. But I want that to be E flat, A flat, and then G. As you can see, we got a G here, so we'll go ahead and put that there. If we have an E flat here, which sounds nice, that creates the same chord we had before. C7, sharp 9, sharp 5. But now I can't go down to E flat. It, it, we've lost some of that zest there melodically going because I'm already playing that note in the chord. All the chords playing, we'll swap that E flat for D flat. So that way when the melody goes down to E flat, it's kind of a fresh sound, fresher. And then maybe it'll even move. The first part of the phrase is kind of like moody and dark. It's got like a heavy face to it. Then it goes higher, branches out, goes up. Even just by the nature of it going up in pitch makes it feel like a lift, makes it feel like the energy gets brighter. When we get back to the end of that phrase, it kind of feels awkward for it to go back to minor brooding land. So we'll keep it there, suspended, which we can either go major or minor. We're going with the natural vibe of what's being communicated, not even from the player or the composer or improvisers, improvisers perspective, but from the standpoint of what the notes, the notes have a mind of their own in a way. You kind of just put some stuff down. I, I put some stuff down and then it's saying, it's talking back. Not the sharp five, but the flat five here, leading in, so going up. The very end of the section goes, and we no longer are going down to G, now we're going to F, because that's the beginning of how it all starts. That's a little awkward, there's... But what isn't awkward is going up to F. Do, do, do. 
it sounds like a very clear melodic move. And it also sets us up to maybe have that F be the beginning of a B section, like maybe we go to G flat major, because then that would make that the F, the major seventh. Let's see. That's the old timiness there. It's not really old timey, but when it's that chromatic, it kind of makes us feel like it's a big band or something, like Duke Ellington or, or uh, Gil Evans or something. Right now, I'm not thinking theory at all. I'm just thinking I want to go up while holding the F. So what are these chords? F sharp, major, s nine, sharp, 11. And then the next one is, well, that's, that's F sharp minor, major seven. It's an F sharp minor triad with a major seven. And then we got F sharp major seven with a sharp five. This is zesty. This is, this is real zesty. I like that. And then this one is what? This is B major flat five. This is one of the wonkiest things I've played in a while. That's what my ear's telling me. Ah, oh, this is this is the B7 again. That's kind of what this is. The B13. So maybe instead of doing as a tritone substitution and going to B flat slash E flat like we did in the first section, maybe we now treat this as a true five chord and it goes to E. This could be interesting. Let's try it. Let's see. And maybe we could do a same motion on E, which would kind of create like a sequence basically. Um, but that melody note of G on top is going to be different. All right, we, we've got, this is, this is interesting, this is interesting. So the zanier you get harmonically, the more important it tends to become that all the voices are kind of accounted for and you make sure they're all moving or contributing in a way that, that, that supports the overall idea. So the introduction of those three notes there to these that were already there is pretty important. In fact, actually, this B doesn't need to be there. This one can just move down because now the B will be here. tone has been used a lot already in the first section, in the, in the A section. So maybe we leave that off the table for the B section. It's a way to kind of very subtly, harmonically emphasize kind of a different palette, a different, not a different palette, a different hue in the palette. So then that can go to E. That feels right. I guess it's got to be minor. Having the 9, the F sharp, and the minor 3rd be separated by not in this way, which is always really nice and pleasant sounding, but instead swapping these so that they're 13 semitones apart. It's, it's crunchy, it's zesty, it's intense, but given that we're escalating energy here, it might be warranted. Let's see. Our recipe now is we hold a note on top, we hold a note on bottom, and we have two notes in between that move up chromatically. So let's keep that same recipe. This is our note on top, this is our note on bottom. That's creating an E minor sound because we've got E and G, it's a minor third. E minor, nine, and then C major, first inversion. Seven to E 
seven sharp nine to A seven to E flat seven sharp eleven to D minor. Mm, I like that. Yeah, there we go. Kind of a Billy Stray horn vibe. B flat add two with a major seven on top, using this kind of classic add two voicing with the major seven. And then A over D. That's nice because then these voices move in different directions. And then to A flat. G7, sharp 11, 13. where there's multiple sections and it's like a tune, you know? If you want to check out the entire process unedited of how this was put together, every little tidbit, every little decision, head over to my Patreon. That's where I post the full videos of these entire sessions. Catch you next time.